I am speaking with an award-winning landscape photographer. It is Wendy Klein from Brisbane, Australia. Wendy, how did it feel to win your first significant landscape photography award? Oh, look, I was just on cloud nine. I was just over the moon. It was just, oh, wow, I've only been doing this for a few years and, and to win something like that. And I just couldn't believe it. I thought, wow, they've chosen my photo over all these other awesome photos. So, oh, I don't know, it just made me want to just go on and even do better. <laughs> so there was one photo in particular that has captured the imagination of everybody in our Photography Academy Facebook group. And it's this photo of the dead trees sticking up out of the water. Can you tell us how you came to take this photo? Well, I was... Um, I was planning on going to this lake because I'd seen many, many um, dead trees in this lake in several photos and I thought I just have to go there because I just have this fascination with dead trees. I even name them whether they're a grumpy old man or whether they're a, a young adolescent or a female or whatever. Um, I just sort of can look at a dead tree and say well this is you know a female or a male or whatever. So then um, I organised to stay on the grounds in a little cabin and it's right on the edge of the lake and I just have to walk a few metres and there, there where all the dead trees are and so I just scout around and find my composition to see which part's going to look the best and I come across these ones and they look really sophisticated and I, I call them the dancing trees because that's what they look like to me and um, with the little ones in the background sort of looking on, learning. Yeah, so that was... <laughs> how that picture come about. So when you are actually looking through your viewfinder for this photo in particular, what are you looking for? What aspects of the composition are you particularly focusing on? Well, I was making sure that I had both those bigger trees in the foreground and then I could see through the viewfinder there was more in the background of those trees and I thought it just looked the perfect um, composition and then with the reflection right on the edge of the lake. So we have this photo of you standing with a framed print of that shot. Where is that frame right now and how big is that print? Uh, it's sitting, I'm sort of looking at it from where I'm sitting here in my family room above my electric piano. Um, and it's 100 by 65. Centimeters. 100 centimeters by 65 centimeters. You have some amazing photos of the main bridge in downtown Brisbane. Approximately how many times do you think you have been there shooting that particular composition and for how long have you been going there? Oh my goodness, uh, too many to count. <laughs> you have so many beautiful photos. What is your secret that you use in order to walk away from a photo shoot with a photo that you are really proud of? Well, composition is the main thing and lighting and because I'm only 10 minutes right from that bridge by car, I sort of go in quite regularly and especially I've only been photographing with the DLSR not quite four years. Okay, so let's just hold right there for a second. You're saying that even though you have some absolutely stunning photos, you have only been shooting landscape photography for four years. Is that right? That's correct. So this is amazing. You are living proof that photography can be learned and it's not just a gift that people are born with. No, that's right. It can be learned. When I had my, when I got my DLSR, I booked myself in for a lesson because I had no idea how to use it. And um, the fellow that was teaching me, he was so technical. He, the first thing he said, um, well, what sort of composition are you going to have? And I looked at him and I thought, what the heck is composition? <laughs> I'd never heard of the word. So, um, and he went on with all this technical jargon and I thought, I'm not even game to say I, I have no idea what he's talking about. So I come away from that lesson quite disappointed because I thought I was going to go to that lesson and, and have a lot of fantastic shots. Well, I came home with no shots. So <laughs> and then I just put myself out there doing workshops and. Um, Dale Sharp, he was tragically killed in the US last year chasing storms and uh, he's been my idol and I did about 11 different workshops with him, one-on-ones and um, just went from there and 
I just got out there and I practice all the time. Just try and challenge myself each time, even if it's the same location, I'll challenge myself. Well, what can I do better from the last photo that I took here? Yeah, so it's just, that's how it all began. And now it's become an obsession. <laughs> So you've been going back to the same photo locations again and again, year after year. What do you have to say about persistence and the role of persistence in achieving fantastic photos? Persistence really pays off. You've really got to keep going at it and um, until you're getting it exactly how you want it. So my advice to anyone is just keep at it. Just keep doing it. Just always keep challenging yourself because there's always something you can do better. So as a photography community, we are all so proud of you for your photography achievements, for the awards that you have won, for the beauty of your portfolio. So what is next for you? What's next for Wendy Klein? Um, Next for me is um, when I retire from nursing, to sort of um, get out there and help others learn and to become a great photographer, just the way I've done it. Yeah, probably not on a full-time basis, but um, I am conducting a workshop for two days coming up in May. Um, That'll be a sunrise, sunset and astro. So um, the photographer over here that runs workshops here and overseas She's asked me to conduct that workshop so people can learn Wendy Klein's way of shooting and, and, and my way of editing. Yeah. There are some photographers who have the mistaken belief that if they buy a more expensive camera or lens, then they are going to be able to create even more beautiful photos. Is it all about the camera? What do you have to say about that? Um, Well, that's quite debatable. I really think it's the person behind the camera, whether you've got a cheap camera or the most expensive camera on the market, you have to know how to operate your camera and the settings that you're using. So anyone that's got a a cheap camera, they can uh, still achieve a great photo if they know what they're doing with the correct settings. And there are also some photographers who believe that the only way to get great photos is by traveling far, far away from home. So what do you have to say about that? Can you get great photos if you stay close to home? No, I think you can find something in your own area. Yeah, You just have to get out and explore your own area a lot more. You don't have to travel overseas or like that um, dead log with the hole through it. That's only a couple of hours, three hours away from here. And I had seen a picture of that log probably three years ago and um, I set myself out to explore and find it because I wanted that shot. So part of your workflow is to be constantly researching and searching for new things to photograph. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, People say, how come you get so many different things? I said, because I don't like seeing the same shot that people put up all the time. Um, I prefer to shoot on my own a lot of the time because then you haven't got five or six other people putting up the same photo from the same composition virtually. So I like to get different things to what everyone else is getting. I put myself out there to find those different things. Within our photography community, we have a lot of discussion about the Photography Transformation Masterclass, and it's a four-step system with step one being the research and planning, Step two being uh, compositions, step three, camera settings, mastering camera settings, and step four, adding drama to your photos through post-processing. Do you have anything that you would say to someone who is considering buying the Photography Transformation Masterclass? What would your advice be to them? Oh, look, I think it's absolutely a must. They will learn so much. Because even though I was um, doing photography before I did that masterclass, there was still a lot in there that I learned from it. I'd say to anybody that wants to do it, just do it because it'll help them greatly. It's a fantastic masterclass. Everyone that wants to um, continue on their photography journey, just get out there and enjoy it and have fun, sort of, because that's what I do. Yeah, it's always fun. And I mean, different times, I'm always either falling down a mountain or having some sort of mishaps. (laughs) But um, I remember just after Christmas, um, I was with another photographer and I really wanted to shoot this place down near Wollongong. And um, he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. It's a sunrise spot. 
but he didn't tell me that it was up a really steep mountain and all through these trees and it was like a goat track to get there. And um, and here you've got a backpack on and a tripod and, and after having a knee replacement, it wasn't very easy. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I can't do this. And he says, yes, you can. I said, if you'd told me what this track was like, I wouldn't have never went. And he said, but we're here now, so you're going to do it. <laughs> but I fell down the mountain coming back. But, um, yeah, all good. And what would be your advice to the photographer who is still not satisfied with his or her photos, who maybe doesn't have a portfolio yet or doesn't have a real body of work that they are proud of yet? What would your advice be to a photographer who is struggling or just starting out? Just keep at it. Keep working at it because it'll come. Yeah. It's just get out there. My motto is practice, practice, practice. Like I've, I've just mentored through your program, I think, six people and, um, and a couple of them have been most impressed. They'll send me photos and say, what do you think? And, and you sort of look at it and you think, well, what's the nicest way you can possibly <laughs> uh, help them here? And, um, and then I think, well, look back at my own and, you know, when I first started taking photos, I was just so proud of my first photos. And now when I look back at them, I just cringe and think, oh, my gosh, did I even put that up on a photography page? But at least you can go back and say, well, this is where I was and this is where I am now. So it's achievable to anybody if they want to put the hard work in and get out there and just do it. People say to me, oh, but you're always out there shooting. Well, yeah, I am, because that's the only way I learn and the only way I can improve. Thank you so much, Wendy, for speaking with me. It's a pleasure, Tim. Now, to you, the viewer, if you want to take your photos to the next level to be able to create photos that people look at and just say, wow, and even more importantly, photos that you are just exceedingly proud of that contribute to an overall adventure in your life, that, that adventure of going out and seeking and hunting for buried treasure, so to speak, to find the beautiful photos. If you want to take your photography to that next level, then I encourage you to watch the free web class that explains the four step system and the ultimately the photography transformation masterclass. So click on the link below, watch the free web class, and I will tell you all about it. Thanks for watching. And thank you so much to Wendy Klein for participating with this interview. We very much look forward to seeing more of your work as you progress and go on your trips. And uh, it's just a joy to follow your journey. Thanks, Wendy, and thanks everybody else for watching. Bye-bye.